Now, I know what you're thinking. How can you miss me if I never go away? But while I was cleaning up, I had some thoughts. And yeah, yeah, I know. Mark it down on the calendar. But I had purchased these a while back when I was actually still refurbishing DS lights. And by the way, I have a whole stack of refurbished DS lights. If anyone wants to get hooked up, let me know. Anyway, um, I have some brand new touchscreens, so... What the hell, this thing doesn't really need a touchscreen, but the one that's in there doesn't work, so let's fix it, you know? Why not? Uh, and I did find a battery cover. Not that I was concerned I was missing one, I just didn't feel like... I didn't think it was worth taking up time during the last video to find one. So even though... I'm uploading this as a completely separate video. Just be aware that a grand total of 10 minutes has passed between my last video and this one. So, I haven't really had time to play with this much beyond what I did in the last video. I still think it's super cool though. I do have some suggestions for improvement, but they're not necessarily suggestions for uh, the genius behind Boxy Pixel. They're, I guess, sort of suggestions for the community. Uh, my biggest complaint so far is that there's no real. Um, I suppose that doesn't really need to come out. There we go. There's no screen, or not screen, a uh, power LED diffuser or light pipe. It's literally just a hole. And, I mean, it, it works, but I don't think it's a very elegant solution. Pop these shoulders out of here. Careful you don't lose them springs. On uh, my first Game Boy macro that I made, I ended up just drilling a hole, just like that, and then I filled the hole with hot glue. And that worked. It wasn't very pretty, and I mean, in hindsight, it was better than nothing, but I wasn't very happy with it. In the end, I also ended up completely destroying that faceplate anyway, so it didn't really make a difference, but um, I had a thought to use later, I had a thought maybe I should use some uh, clear two-part epoxy, fill the hole with that, that might work, of course I never got a chance to try it out, okay. So, to take this touch screen off, this touch screen does come off, it's a completely separate thing here, as evidenced by this. This new one is going to go on, oh shit, I don't think this is a DS Lite touch screen. Oh, maybe it is. We'll have to... We'll have to pay attention to that. Okay. The connector looks like it's in a slightly different spot and it's shorter. Maybe it's fine? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay. So, to take this off, there's just a sticky gasket holding the two together. I'm going to start in this corner here. And just peel. Heat helps, but I've never had to use it. And if you're removing the digitizer, chances are your screen is still fine. So try flexing that to take some of the pressure off this. Alright. This thing, I have no sticky thing to hold it down. Well, we'll figure something out. 
or we'll just reuse this. That's probably the easiest solution. So hindsight would have been great if this didn't peel off with the touch screen. And I broke it. Okay, we'll do something else. I'll be right back. Huh? Huh? Yeah? I think this will work. So this is just uh, cheap double-sided tape that you can grab on AliExpress. The idea is that you use it to uh, attach a screen lens to a, or a screen lens, like a digitizer or something to a phone. But I really don't recommend this stuff because it's, quite frankly, it's garbage. But I already have it, so what the hell. It'll work for this. Just gonna do all four corners along the metal frame here, or corners, all four sides. My goal is I'm trying to make, oh no, I dropped a screw. Whatever, I know where it went. I'll grab it in a minute. I'm trying to make a uh, sealed square so that no dust can get in once it is closed up. For those of you with AGS-001s, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that dust getting beneath the screen lens, or in this case the digitizer, super annoying. Not very easy to clean up either. Okay. Hopefully it fell in my uh, files. There we go. Before you stick that screen lens down, you probably want to give this a wipe with a microfiber cloth. And by screen lens, I totally mean touch screen. I did notice that those weird lines went away when I peeled that old touch screen off, so whatever defect that was on the screen, that was a, an artifact of the old digitizer, not the LCD itself. I'm sorry if I've been quiet, I just realized how far away I was from my phone. I tried to be more careful than that, but... Okay. Next, there should be protective... Not get it. There it is. Oh, shit, that was the wrong side. Damn it. There's like this one spot that will not... There we go. OK, 
Okay, so touch panel lines up with the top and sides here. And before I let that sit down, there's a hair in there. Boom. All right. That should be it. I do rather like the texture on this. It's like a matte finish. And I really don't think this touch screen goes with this console. Especially because this no longer lines up. at all. But it's the same connector. It's just about in the same place. Maybe it's good enough. If anyone knows what consoles these are supposed to be for, I'd love to know. Curiosity and all that. Okay. And if it doesn't work, oh well. It still looks better and, uh, well, it looks better. And it's not like I have reduced functionality. It, it didn't work before I started, so. Get your Wi Fi module. It looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay. So, of course, both springs and pins fell out. Be careful with these uh, shoulder button springs. If you're not careful, they will go right through your finger. It is just as pleasant as it sounds. upside down. Shouldn't matter too much though. Alright, check power button, volume. That feels like it's on there. That feels like it's on there. Let's screw this together. By the way, the auto boot setting for games, it is persistent after you remove the battery. So even though I just popped the battery in this, if I boot it with a game, it'll boot straight into the game. 
which is super nice because uh, now it doesn't show that uh, health and safety bullshit. But in this case, we want that because I want to try out the touch screen. And needs a little bit of calibration, but it seems to work now. So I'm happy with that. Set that to purple. It is August 22nd. Yes, it is August 22nd. It is 11.05. And that's asking for my birthday. We'll leave that on January. Now that that has been calibrated, the reason I wanted a touch screen in this thing is because if you boot it up without a game, even though you have that health and safety screen, you can still use, you can still control the brightness on this thing. So I'm probably going to leave it on, yeah, I'll leave it on the brightest because whatever, what else am I going to do with it? But. If you have a uh, flash card, you can also usually control the brightness within the flash card as well. And I have, I have a skin on this, of course. But, ta da! Uh, where are my games? Probably the games folder. There you go. Oh, whoops. Can't see shit with that on. There we go. Got to get out of the menu first. There's a special build of this um, emulator that puts the menu and the screen on the bottom screen instead of just one or the other. It's a lot better than having to try and guess. There's that, and then you can go ahead and stick on your uh, lens there, or your bezel, whatever the hell it is. In my case, I would probably want to line it up at the top, because the opening looks a little bit too big. But the silver one isn't going to stick with the damn. I'm going to use this new black one I have. I found this in my parts bin. I have no idea why I had it. I mean, clearly it was for a DS, but... I mean to say, I don't know why it went unused. You can also get, and I do not know where, but you can get custom glass lenses for these things. Say. I say Game Boy Macro across the bottom, and they're sized so that um, it has that that bezel on the side for like Game Boy Advance games. But I like this a little bit better. Well, when it doesn't freeze, that's cool. Because um, you could use it for emulators and stuff. But it does still work perfectly fine with uh, Game Boy Advance. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you have any suggestions for improvement. I think I should have got the black one. I like the silver on black look. But I also really like the black on black look. 
Uh, no, I, I just like how the anodized black one looks more than the clear anodized one. But, I mean, it still looks cool as hell. But let me know if you guys have any suggestions for improvement, especially on that that uh, LED hole. I might end up trying to 3D print something, just because I don't want to just put hot glue in there. I don't know. And I do have clear filament. But, yeah. There's your macro, and there's how you replace the touch screen, touch digitizer, if you need to. So, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.